back to wilderness. Um, in the set of videos that I've created so far, I've given food for thought for certain topics such as making a fire pit, uh, you want to protect the roots and the underground ecosystem, as well as preventing, uh, where possible, forest fires. Uh, you want to look after and preserve the area that we're working in and we wish to remain in. Um, we've got some beautiful woodland forest fires we can do without. We talked about a sawhorse, so creating an area where you can process larger pieces of wood down to smaller pieces safely and responsibly. Uh, and we also talked about segregation of areas and the importance of doing so. So you're keeping your game preparation separate from your sleeping area and working areas. All common sense. The order in which I've done these, uh, there is no real order, it just happens to be the way I've done it uh, in this woodland. Um, but the order in which I've done these wouldn't necessarily be applicable, certainly in a survival situation. You'd have other priorities, fire, water, shelter, that kind of thing, um, in no particular order there either. So one of the things I thought I'd do a video on is an introduction to traps and snares, or traps and triggers rather. Um, there won't be any snares used in today's video. So it's not an instructional video to show you how to make them. It's basically to give you an idea of what is possible uh, for you to make in a woodland with very little or nothing. In fact, if you had some flint or um, a sharp stone or something like that without a knife, it would be possible to make all of the ones I'm showing you today uh, with just that. So the idea is, with little or no more than some either hazel or willow, um, that kind of diameter, we're going to be able to make uh, two particular traps or triggers. Uh, one's a figure of four and one's a figure of four variation with a little toggle. Um, for the cordage, for the purpose of this, I will be using um, some uh, paracord. So you've got the seven strand. I'll be using bits a little bit like this, uh, purely and simply so that I've got these um, pre-made for future use and the longevity of them and the robustness is going to remain. But you could potentially make your own cordage um, out of materials that are readily available, um, which would be more than, more than strong enough to, to do what you need. Um, lots of different materials you can do in the cordage, and maybe I'll do a video on that one day as well. So, that's the idea. Little or nothing, not even necessarily a knife, you could potentially make all of these um, triggers or traps that I'm going to show you today. And again, it's not legal in this country, check the regulation if you are going to be practicing these, but for this video it's purely demonstration purposes. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll start showing you those. This one's known as the figure four uh, deadfall in this case. The same figure four um, trigger effectively can be used with bird baskets and traps that are more humane, uh, considered more humane. Um, this one's designed to crush uh, the flat on the surface. Um, you wouldn't set it up on the log like this, this is just for demonstration purposes. But you could scale this type of trigger up for much larger quarries such as boars and things like that in the jungle. Um, obviously using large logs or large stones where possible. The idea is it's designed to crush three sticks, a number of cuts to hold it together, and everything basically is pushing down on this single point at the top. Um, the idea is you have some bait that's come along and put on this, this bait stick here. The quarry would come along, knock that out of the way, by either nibbling it or chewing it or pulling it, and as it does that, this weight then comes down, uh, collapses on top, and, and hopefully should kill it cleanly. Um, with all triggers, traps, snares, you should be checking them very frequently um, without disturbing them too often you should be checking at least two to three times uh, within a 24 hour period. Um, again, le legalities, regulations, you need to check. This is not legal in this country, the UK. Um, again, survival context, survival perspective. Figure four, dead four. Figure of four. Um, you can see it's got the same 
upright, the same sort of angled um, away from it, which is holding the weight, which is the deadfall. And then instead of the bar going across with the bait here, you've got this toggle on a piece of like cordage. Now, this bit here is where the bait would be. You'd smear whatever on there, I don't know, uh, honey or berries or that kind of thing, or some meat. And the idea is this deadfall here will collapse on top when something comes along and moves that. It's as simple as that. Not much to it at all. This is known as the clap trap as I've come across it. Um, there are other variations. I've seen some where there are other sticks lashed from these points here across. Uh, so when this bit swings over, it's increasing the surface area that's going to make contact with whatever's unfortunate enough to sort of touch this bait bar here. This wouldn't be set up on the log again. This would be set up on the ground, anchored in with uh, a couple of anchors. You would uh, block off the back end, so you would kind of encourage animals to come in from this, this area here uh, and take the food off the top of this bait bar. So if I hold this down firm, the animal will come in and it would just touch and that's it. The idea is flicks over, trap it and break its neck. Again, you could scale this up appropriately um, depending on where you were and the type of quarry that you had to catch or you were looking to capture. Um, but this would certainly work for squirrels and things like that if they were on the ground uh, looking for nuts and what have you, or even birds coming in, uh, sort of larger birds. and triggers um, again remember be responsible um, these are designed for sort of survival situations not just every day in the, the UK for example and not legal uh, if you're interested in learning more uh, traps and triggers from the world have a look at my website get in touch I do run courses I can run best boat courses depending on what it is you're interested in um, but yeah be responsible and always abide by the law thanks for watching mm -hmm.